Hi, my name is Stephen. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, this is WooCommerce series episode number four. In this video, I'm going to show you how to customize your product archive page using the Divi theme. By the end of this video, you will go from this to this right here. So if this sounds interesting, let's get started. The first thing you need to do is to log into your WordPress website. You can see that I'm in my WordPress dashboard right here. If I scroll down here, you can see the Divi option here. I can click on the Divi theme from here. And here you can see the single product page that we created last week. And now we want to create a new template for the product archive page. So what we need to do now is to click on add new template. And then from here, we want to select the product archive page. So we want to select product archive page over here and click great template. So it's going to add the global header here because we have a default global header over here. So what we need to do now is to add a custom body and first we want to add one column row and then inside this one column row i want to add a test module so here's the test module i will click on that so because i'm just regretting what we have right here inside that test module i'm just going to copy and paste these soccer shoes so you can see that we have that soccer shoes inside here so i'm going to click on this pencil icon here and then i'm going to center align the text like this so if you look over here you can see that we have a big section here which is the blue one over here and then the green one is the row so we want to add a new row so the second row we want it to be this one over here so that we can add the shop module in the big one so we add the shop in here in this one like this and then over here on the side, we want to add the sidebar. So now we have the shop module here and the sidebar over here. So let's go ahead and start customizing all of this. So the first one we are going to customize is the first row over here. So I'm going to click on the setting icon here. Then I'm going to click on design and go to spacing. And then I want to add top padding and bottom padding. So I'm going to add 100 here. And then I'm going to click on link that will add 100 on the button as well. Now we have this space here and over here. So now I want to go back to content and then scroll down to background. I want to give this a background color and background image. You can see over here that we have this background image here. So I'm going to go back here. And then I'm going to click on images. I'm going to add a background image. So I have that image here, so I'm going to select that. Of course, this is just for demo purposes. You can use your own images. And here you can see that we have it and it's really small. It's 80%. So we want to make this 100%. So I'm going to go back to design. Then I'm going to click on size. And then I want to make this 100%. Like this. And then I want to make this one 100% as well. The width. Okay, so you can see now we have it 100 percent now you can see that we have this space over here so we can basically just drag this space if we want like this and close it up or you can just click on the section here and then go to spacing make sure that you have zero over here zero over here as well i'm going to just going to add zero everywhere so i'm going to add zero on the top margin bottom margin and inside the patterns as well now you can see that we don't have any more space like that okay so if we go over here you can see that we have a lot more space here so maybe we want to increase the pattern inside the first row over here so i'm going to click on the row again and go back here and go to specsing i'm going to make this 200 like that or maybe 150 okay so i think 150 is fine i'm going to click on that and then the next thing i'm going to do if you look over here you can see that this doesn't really look good so i'm going to click on content and go back to background over here and then i want to give this a background color as well i'm going to give it black obviously it's not going to show because i already have a background image 
I'm going to click back on image and scroll down here where we have the background blend mode. I'm going to change this to overlay like this. And that is going to change this to black like this. And then I'm going to come back here and reduce the opacity of this black color. I'm going to drag this bar down like this to the point that I like it, maybe like this. So if you come back over here, you can see that our text here, the soccer shoes are not readable. So I'm going to change the color to white. So I'm going to click on this and click on design. I'm going to click on heading text and scroll down here. You can change the font if you want. I'm going to change this to bold and then I'm going to change the color to white like that. And then you can go ahead and play with the size if you want. You can change the size to whatever you want. Okay. So I'm just going to leave this on default for the sake of the tutorial. And then I'm going to exit out of here. So now we are done with the first row. You can see now if we go back over here, you can see that we have a similar design. So the next thing we need to work on right now is this column right here. So I'm going to click on the entire column. I'm going to click on design, facing. Then I'm going to give this padding 25%, 25 pixels on the top, at the bottom, and also. 25 pixels on the left and on the right, like that. And then over here, you can see that everything is blending in. You can't really see the pattern that I just gave this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give this entire section a background color. So if we go back over here, you can see that we have a background color here. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. So because we have this here, we will not be able to select that section from here. So what you can do is click on this three dot here and then you can click on the layers over here. And then from here, we want to select the entire section like this. I'm going to go to the background and I'm going to give it black background like this. And then I'm going to reduce the opacity to whatever I want like this. Maybe this is good. And now that we have this, I'm going to close these layers and then I'm going to click on this section again and I'm going to give the section a white background color like this. You can see what we have right now. If you go back over here, you can see that we have a little bit of space here. So I'm going to go back here and give this some inner patterns on the section so I can go to the settings or I can just drag this from here like this maybe 70 like this and just drag that put that space over here and then the next thing we need to do now is to customize this shop module to look like this one right here so the first thing we need to do is to go back here and click on the setting and then we're going to click on the cell badge and then we're going to give that a background color and then we're going to click on the title and then we're going to make that a little bit bold maybe semi bold and then we can make it all cap like that and we can center that to the middle and then we'll do the same thing with the pricing we can make that bold like this and then we can make that all cap or center it to the middle like this and then we can change the color to black if we want like that or we can change the color to whichever color you want, just like I have it over here. So I'm just going to use the color. And of course you can change the size if you want, but I'm just going to leave it on the default size like this. If you go over here, you can see that we already have something similar, but you can see that we have a rounded corners over here. So I'm going to go over here and click on this pencil icon here, the top one. Then I'm going to give this image a rounded corner of 25 pixels. Like this so you're not going to be able to see it because on this one right here i have a little bit of box shadow so i'm going to go ahead and add a box shadow here as well so let me scroll down to box shadows and click on this now you can see that we have that rounded corner over here but i'm going to reduce the shadow a little bit because i don't like it like this so i'm going to put minus 10 here to the strength i'm going to change the strength to minus 10 and then I'm going to increase the blur a little bit. Okay, so you can see that this is looking pretty good already. So the next thing we need to do is the hover color here. We have white. You can leave it like this if you want. But you go back over here. You can see that I have this 
color here so i'm going to go back here and click on the design and click on overlay and then from here the overlay icon i want to change this to white like this and then the background i want to change that to black i'm going to click on the icon from here and then from here you can see i selected black like that and then i'm going to reduce the opacity so basically if i hover over here you can see that we have black but i'm going to reduce the opacity to this maybe and then you can see that we have this really nice over effect okay so the next thing we need to work on is the sidebar over here so i'm going to click on the row and then i'm going to click on the second column and then i want to give this column a box shadow i'm going to scroll down here and click on design then i'll scroll down here and click on box shadow and i'm going to click on this first one right here it's going to look like this and then i'm going to go ahead and uh, adjust this a little bit i'm going to do minus 10 here and then i will increase the blur strength a little bit maybe to 45 this and then maybe i will adjust the shadow strength a little bit maybe like this 15 like this okay and then the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go back over here to background i'm going to give this white background if i give it black background it's going to look like this but i'm going to give it a white background like this okay i will close this and now i'm going to click on the sidebar and then i'm going to click on design so from content here you select the widget area so i already selected sidebar so whatever you see inside here is something that you have to grade inside the widget area so if i select this you can see that it's empty there's nothing there we have this archive pages here so just going to select the sidebar and then if you click on design and click on layout we can choose whether to align this to the right to the left like this so i'm going to align this to the right so it will look like this so the next thing we need to do is to go to spacing so i want to give this 25 pixel padding like this on the top and then i want to give it another 25 pixel padding on the left and on the right so it's going to look like this and then the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to click on the pencil icon here and then i'm going to change the font weight to bold maybe like this or maybe regular and then I'm going to change the color to black, or maybe I'll change the color to this, just like this. I'm going to make that semi bold, like this. And then I'm going to click on this ones, and I'm going to change this to semi bold as well. I will change the color to black. Okay, so you can see what we have right now. It's looking pretty good. You can increase the size if you want, but I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, so this is what we have right now. If we go over here and look at this page, you can see that we also have a rounded corner on this whole row over here. So let's go back here and give this one a rounded corner as well. So I'm going to click on the entire row and then I'm going to go down to borders and then I'm going to drag this to 25%. 30 percent like this so this is looking pretty good so you can see here that this row is overlapping on this one so we can either give space here on the top like this i'll just go to spacing and then i'll just put top margin like this you can either put space here like that and then the page will look like this or we can do it like this just like the one we have here we can overlap it and then it's going to be on top like this look really nice so up to you so however you want to do it this is pretty good too and then if you want to overlap it you can easily drag it like this and overlap it like this or you can just click on the setting and then go to design click on spacing and then the top margin you put a minus like this so you can put a minus to maybe 60 like that 
So this is pretty much how you can create a custom archive page. So now that we are done, what we need to do is to click on save. Then we can click on this X here. And then we click on save changes here. Now, if we go back here to this page and refresh it, now you can see that we have a pretty nice looking product archive page. So one more problem that I want to show you is that if we click on one of these product categories here, we are not going to get this design again. It's going to go back to the default TV design. So if you click on this, now you can see what we'll get. It will take us back to something boring like this. So what we need to do is go back to the team builder and then we can go over here to the setting for the product archive template. We click on the setting here. Now over here, you can see that we only have the product archive page. Now we want to include all product category pages. So we select this all product category pages and save it and click on save changes. So now if we go back to this page right here and click on any of these product categories right here. So let's click on variation. For example, if we click on this, it's going to pull out our awesome design. So if we click on this, we're going to get this right here and it's going to show you only the uh, variable product. Okay. And then if we click on the soccer shoes, it's going to show you only the soccer shoes, like all the product that is in that category. You can see right here that this is really, really beautiful. So this is pretty much how you can create a product archive page using the DV theme. So if you like this video, don't forget to hit that subscription button. Click on the bell notification so you get notified when I upload a video. And if you like this series and you want me to continue making them using the DV theme or using another page builder like Elementor or Breezy, let me know in the comment section below and I will make those videos. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.